Being an independent musical artist can be really, really tough, but it can also be extremely satisfying. I asked five independent musicians what they felt the pros and cons to being an independent artist were. Let's find out what they told me. So um, I'm going to ask you what the best thing is about being a, an independent one person army of noise that is here after. What's the best thing about it? Um, I don't have to answer to anyone. <laughs> yeah. Like I can sit here and be like, this is a good idea or this is a shit idea. And I don't have to hear like, well, I like this idea. No, but I don't like this idea. Like it's, it's, it's so much faster Yeah, you know, that like I can just get it done. And are you like, quite decisive then? Because I, I guess some people would freak out at that, right? That they haven't necessarily got people to bounce it off and get that sense of security from the group. But yeah, this is a yeah. good idea, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can, at one point or another in the life of a song, if I'm writing it, I'll decide whether or not to change the entire thing, change parts of it, or just be, hey, this is it. This is done. I'm not going to keep pushing it because if I keep pushing it, it's going to get turned into mud. Yeah. So like I, I, it's one of three decisions. It's do I change the whole thing? Do I add or change little parts here and there? Or am I done? Yeah. And I kind of know when I'm done, when I go through the song and I can't find parts that I either want to change or add to. Like if I think, oh, if I add to this, it's going to be too much. Or if I don't add to this, it's going to be a gap. Like yeah. I know what to do, but I, I, could, I could say I'm pretty decisive when it comes to finishing something and just moving on because I think that was a lesson I learned in, in the band that never released any music was we, it was never done. It was never yeah, done. Yeah. I need yeah, one yeah. more part, one more part. And I think that's what frustrated me the most was that like, I was happy with a lot of the songs and like, mm. I thought as is like, these are good songs. People will enjoy this. Like we yeah. should totally release this. But on the other side of it, it's not, it's not like that. So I think that that's more the motivation for it. And do you, do you impose, do you impose like restrictions on yourself? So do you set deadlines? I want this finished by here. I want to release music here. And do you work backwards from there? Or do you just go with the flow and see what comes out? It's kind of a mix of that. Like right now in my head for whatever comes next, I'm like, I want to do something next July. Like I want to have something by next July. So like. Why? As, Why next July? I figure it's, it's, a, it's a nice long period of time after what I just did. And in the meantime, I may come up with singles that I may, that may not fit on yeah. whatever I'm doing so I can release those singles and, and, and it won't overkill it. Yeah. Uh, but I figure, you know, July is a nice year and a month or so away from, from what I, what I've done now. Yeah. Um, and so, and I, I don't know, I just feel like I write music that resonates well with a summer mood. <laughs> yeah. if that makes any sense like i always feel like well this is this is a good summary vibe when you're in that sort of empires of like mindset what are the benefits and what do you see is the the bits you maybe struggle with a bit more yeah good question the thing about like my <laughs> i almost see eol as like a respite from my day job and I, my day job is great i enjoy it typical day-to-day -day work is propose an idea or come up with an idea propose an idea get a bunch of feedback and opinion on it yes, this is cool. No, this sucks. You know, do that for like months on end. And then, uh, you know, finally it's done. And so like, it's this whole process of like having to come up with an idea and get everybody else's opinion on it. Sometimes I just don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to like have something that's mine yep. that, uh, you know, hopefully people like it, but at the end of the day, it's like, if I, if I want to take this certain approach, I can do it. If I want to, have like a metal breakdown in the middle of a uh i don't know a bossa nova beat or something like i can do that and it's up to me it's nice to be able to do it like at my own pace at yeah. my own pressure and not have to worry about expectations of anybody else what would you say the downsides are then to, to doing something on your own um well i mean i'm limited to just me and and my opinion and i feel like it's easier for me and maybe this is just my personality but like i often put myself on the back burner when other things come up. Whereas if I've committed to something with a band, I'll often put more energy to that or like feel I'm more obligated to that than I am to my own thing. It is quicker from idea to completion doing it on my own, but it is longer sometimes in between those ideas. In the same amount of time that Elsia did a full album and an EP and started work on an additional album, 
Empires of Light did six or six songs. The other thing I think is really cool about solo thing is like you can really spend a lot of time on the craft aspect of it. Whereas like at least I feel like in a band, you've often got people that are like, okay, come on, we need to go. We need to like get this out the door. We need to go. For me, part of what makes the process fun is being able to experiment on things and try different things. And like maybe I've remixed this song five different times. Maybe the fifth version is 20% better than the original version, but I learned a whole bunch of stuff in yeah. that that yeah. whole time. We're gonna we're gonna talk a bit more Doug, about being an independent artist. So not only is it all Doug, um, but you're not funded or backed by any, uh, not that I'm aware of, any record label or anything like that. That's uh, or promotion company or anything like that. Is that right? No, it's all, it's all me, all my own money, and all my own everything. Really, we're gonna flip the coin. We'll start with the downside. So, what's the hardest part of being an independent artist? Doing the music's easy actually making the music is a doddle I, I find that the music that i do and want something that's the easy part of it um paying to get the record out you know because I, I wanted to get things mastered i want to get it mastered properly because that's like the final piece so you want to get it professionally mastered so yeah that costs um and then distribution you know digitally is like a small expense that's not, that's not much but you can sort of yeah, I think it's the paying for stuff, really. With the, with the last ones, I had to sell pretty much, you know, two thirds of my pedals to pay for to get the records out. Um, that was going on the assumption that I wasn't going to sell any. Um, so I think, yeah, the, the paying for it, the sale promotion aspect, I find quite difficult. Yeah, um, getting people to listen, having people's time is really hard. Yeah, um, particularly when your songs are ten minutes long and they don't really do a lot. Um, so my son said he said your songs are like one long noise he said so that's why I put on my band camps and just saying it's like, <laughs> like one long noise because um, there's nothing snappy about it it's not, there's not that sort of few seconds at the start of the song where you think okay that's grabbed me yeah. you've got to be in for the long haul you've got yeah. to be in the right frame of mind you've got to be in the right mood so getting people to listen is really really hard mm -hmm. um, so yeah just getting people's attention I find difficult because as you can tell I can talk about stuff quite a lot but talking about me and promoting myself i find that difficult it's just yeah it's not an easy not an easy why, thing to do. why do you find that difficult doug because obviously we've never like spoken personally before um other than we've spoken a lot over instagram or whatever but yeah you know you're not shy about talking about yourself you're not shy about talking yes. about every yeah. element of it so why why do you find that difficult i don't know it's just that self it's that showy offy thing it's like a showing off having a chat with someone is different to saying you know here i am listen to this or aren't I wonderful or any any of that sort of stuff I can yeah I can chat about stuff because we're just having a chat so it's like we might as well be in a in a pub just talking yeah. about things but um actually pushing yourself out there I just yeah, I yeah. find it difficult the I, money yeah probably the money <laughs> financial side of what things money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly what money <laughs> yeah yeah because I mean and even you know even with independent bands like there's usually more members for them to split costs and stuff between, yeah. right? But with us, it's just the two of us. us so, yeah. Yeah, so we we split everything equally between the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we DIY a lot of stuff. Yes. <laughs> and thankfully, we have a lot of friends um, from all parts of the industry who, who have been helping us out with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so like we, we track everything at home. Mm -hmm. um, and then we send it off to be mixed and mastered um by a friend of ours so that that helps a lot um who is yeah. that jeremy schaefer so he shout him, he out. Has, shout him out this could be winning in business now you saying that right yeah. yeah well he he has a studio he's he's in a band called earth groans and he tours all the time yeah um but he also has a studio at his home in south dakota mm -hmm. and he's like he's booked constantly yes. um so he does he does very well he does really really good work okay. um busy most of the time and awesome. he obviously does i mean he does amazing work um yeah yeah, yeah it's great he, he's actually the reason lauren and i got connected we've both known him for a really long time through the scene and then yeah he connected us with, when we both ended up moving to dallas he was like oh y'all should hang out and be friends we're like oh yeah um but yeah he's he's amazing he he does the mixing and master on everything and does a little bit of production stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Our stuff is not like really heavily produced, but he he has done a little bit of stuff on the songs, which I think has made them sound rad. I guess what, if you're listening, if you're watching Jill right now and you're on the cusp of maybe starting to do all this sort of stuff yourself, you might be thinking, God, this sounds like a lot of hard work. And it is, is the reality, right? So it's a lot of time and effort and 
uh, and uh, an energy and sometimes money. What's the hardest part about being an independent artist, Jill? Hmm. I think maybe learning how to write music because, and I say that because I've been playing music since I was 15 for a long, long time. And maybe because my main instrument is bass, like you maybe don't write a song based off bass that much, but like, it took me a long time to find my voice and to learn how to, to like figure out how to write something that's my own and sounds like me. I, I saw people doing it and I, I didn't know how they could just create something out of nothing. And some like at one day something clicked and I was able to do it. Um, but I don't know like how easy that is to turn on for some people or like if they try to write something and, and can't or, you know, I don't know exactly how that process works um, to be able to like advise someone how to actually do it. Yeah, I think that's a hard like first like entry level barrier uh, kind of thing. Yeah. But once you get it, then you yeah. kind of have like maybe more of a process and a structure to, to write more songs. What's the worst thing? The worst is you get to be the boss. <laughs> it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's nice to have those people to bounce ideas off of or get yeah. that perspective from. Um, but I th- think I've kind of been extremely fortunate in that when timing wise, I should say, I've been very fortunate because when I met all the people that are in the post everything collective, that became my, Hey, I need to bounce this idea off of somebody to see if it sucks or yeah, to yeah. see if this is something yeah. I should roll with. And so it was almost like you had a band, but you didn't have people playing in the band with you. It was just like an audience that you could say, Hey, is this good? Or what would you recommend I do? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and like, you could take that advice or you couldn't like, and, yeah, and yeah. nobody's going to get offended by it. So like, I could send you a song and you could be like, Hey, I think you should do this, that, and the other thing. And I can get it back and not do any of those things. And like, we'll just, everyone's, everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Brilliant. and I think the timing yeah. of that in a sense that when I met all, when I met everybody from that, that was what I needed for hereafter to take it to that next step. What's the best thing about being an independent artist? I mean, I like having full control over what I'm making. You know, I can make whatever style of music I want, like pop punk post rock stuff. Like who else wants to play that with me? Not that many people. So like, <laughs> I can just do it myself. You know, if I, if I like the style, I can go for it. And the same with music as well. It's like everyone comes with so many different ideas, unless someone actually takes the sort of lead as in saying, well, this is what I find. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just found working or musically with other people a bit tricky whereas I could just have control over the whole damn thing and it's you know from do the mixing um I don't do the mastering because I'm I'm, I've never done that and I don't want to mess it up so I get it professionally mastered but I do all the mixing of everything myself and um it's all me warts and all I think really um I may not get everything right and I don't try to listen back to it all that much because I just find things that I've done wrong with it. <laughs> so you've got to stop at some point, otherwise you tinker, tinker. <laughs> Lack of ability to work with other people, yeah, I think is the, the probably the main reason because I'm on my own for most of the time at work. Yeah. Really, so I'm just happy in my own company doing my own thing. If you want to see any of the other Meet the Musician episodes in this series, then I'll link some here. And of course, if you would do me the pleasure of subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications, then I'd love to see you here back on the channel in future. Thank you for watching.